like clockwork, Westbrook's peaceful Millbrook Preserve is interrupted every spring by one of Mother Nature's great spectacles. You can see it up close and in person here, individual fish jumping. You can see an individual make its way up to the climb and then either make it or not make it. So there's that natural drama that plays out several times a minute as you're here, which makes it a really popular spot for people to come and observe. It's an amazing moment in nature that you can see from a riverbank, which is rare. You don't have to be on Blue Planet to see something like this. The main character of this drama is a small fish called the alewife. Alewives are anadromous, meaning they spend most of their life in the ocean, but spawn in fresh water. After four or five years in the Gulf of Maine, these alewives now swim 11 miles upstream to spawn in Highland Lake returning to where they were born. So I would think about alewives as the most important fish in the sea, the river, and the lake. Zach Whitener studies alewives, alewives at the Gulf of Maine Research Maine Institute. Animals. He says they're critical to the food chain and have been eaten by all kinds of animals, and humans too, for millennia. Alewives have been incredibly important to both ecosystems and to humans in this area since the last ice age. We can't even begin to think about how many fish there used to be in all of these rivers. When you read historical documents about the river being black with fish, it's hard to imagine that being true. It sounds like hyperbole, but if there's alewives running, you can't see the bottom of that little brook because there are so many fish in it. Seeing the alewives here in Millbrook again is a precious thing to Zach and other conservationists. For a long time, their population was in trouble decimated by dams built by early colonists and others. There was a precipitous drop off in alewife numbers for the last few hundred years and things got really bad probably in the 70s, 80s, early 90s uh, with habitat being much reduced and overfishing occurring. Awareness of the impact that dams and mills were having on alewives and other anadromous fish like herring and salmon did not catch on until the early 21st century when the removal of many key dams allowed for these resilient fish to return. With the help of scientists and conservationists, these fish slowly began to show up in rivers and streams that hadn't seen an alewife in more than two centuries. Their populations have really grown in the last few years. Before the restoration projects and dam removals within the last 10 years, the run on the Penobscot River was estimated to be a couple thousand fish. Uh, as of last week, they recently passed three million fish. And so they, they've really responded to the opening up of habitats. Now visitors to this southern Maine preserve can watch the action unfold, just as the original people living on this land did for hundreds of generations. 60 miles away, it's a whole different scene. As millions of alewives headed to Damariscotta Lake make their way up a man-made fish ladder. It's a 42-foot rise, I think, up to the lake. And so there's 69 pools or thereabouts, and they're divided up so that each pool has an 8 to 10-inch drop or rise up into the next pool up. And that is the most efficient measurement for alewives to go from one pool to the next. This fish ladder has been in place here since the early 1800s, built originally to help alewives bypass an early sawmill. We organized a neighborhood group here at Damariscotta Mills. Deb Wilson and her husband Mark are the stewards of this fish ladder now. Since 2006, they've been steering efforts to restore it with the help of community here. And what you're looking at behind me now is the first third. This part was done first because it was accessible by road and we had to figure out how to get to the rest of it. The entire restoration took 10 years to complete and was funded by a combination of festivals and grants totaling a million dollars, along with plenty of sweat equity. So that's what we did, one pool after another, all the way down, 69 pools. It was quite an enterprise, but right now it's working in an amazing way. And going from, say, 80,000 fish back in 2007, we're up to getting over a million every single year up into Damariscotta Lake to spawn. So a pretty exciting change. The migration here is now one of the biggest in the state. It's so successful that now trucks line up twice a day during migration to harvest alewives. They're sold as lobster bait to local fishermen, making it a key component of the economy here. 
They're pretty important. I think that having a local source of bait is a good thing. And it's traditional too. A lot of the guys who come to get bait here have been doing it for 25 years. They may have come with their fathers before that. And it's almost like a rite of spring as well. With strict rules surrounding the harvest, Mark believes that this alewife run will remain successful into the future. If we're having a good day, you know, we may get a couple hundred bushels in the course of the day. The numbers in terms of what we're harvesting have been steadily going up compared to what they were before the fish ladder um, restoration happened. Our goal is to harvest as many fish as we can, but only harvest those fish that we can sell. Every spring, as the alewives make their way up to the Damariscotta River, the ospreys and eagles arrive, lining the banks, along with tourists from all over the world. Armed with cameras, they're here for the feeding frenzy that only lasts a few weeks. Wherever the wildlife is, that's where I try to go. Stephen yeah. Chu is a photographer from New Jersey who made the trip to capture the excitement. If there's action, the photographers will come. So yeah, once one person knows, he tells his friend, and he tells his friend, and then it becomes a crowd. The story of the humble alewife is still being told, and their future is far from certain, as many of New England's rivers and streams still have dams and impediments that limit the ancient migration patterns of these fish. But with the tireless efforts of scientists, naturalists, and concerned citizens, the future holds promise for this intrepid little fish and all of the species of animals who depend on them to survive. The dark days of the early 90s, I hope and think those are past us now. There's a lot more interest at every level in dam removals and improvement in fish passage when dams can't be removed. I think that there's a lot of work that's been going on to make sure that these fish are properly managed both in the rivers and in the ocean. And I think that we're only going to see more alewives going forward. So alewives, I think, are poised for a resurgence for decades to come.